Okay, so in this case, we are going to consider a typical exam question on our equations as we manage to work with the introductions, but still one or two things also that you need to consider so that you see how are they going to ask these questions. All right, we are given on question number five, solve for x, all right? So 5.1, that was to solve for x and 5.11, we are given 7x minus 30 is equal to 4x minus 6. Okay, the question is, how can we solve this equation? 7x minus 30 is equal to 4x minus 6. All right, we talked about a condition in our introduction of collecting of like terms. So in this case, that's definitely what you need to do. You need to collect uh, like terms. So we have got the part of x there. So you need to collect the like terms, take note, there is an x that we are seeing here, 7x, there's also 4x that we are seeing. In terms of the constants, there's a minus 30 that we are seeing, there's a minus 6 that we are seeing there. So we need to collect these terms together, part of x on its own, the constants on their own. But as we do know that if a number crosses the equal sign or a term, the moment that it crosses the equal sign, the 4x, to this side. It changes the sign. It was a plus, so it is going to be taken as a minus that side. So I'm just going to write it as minus 4x. It was a plus, so it will be a minus. This is equal to, already this side, there was a minus 6 on the right-hand side. But we are going to take the minus 30 there to this side. It must cross the equal sign to that side, the minus 30. The minus 30. All right? So it must change the sign to a plus 30. So it's going to be a plus 30 like that. So this is what you're going to have. 7x minus 4x. Remember, the 4x changed the sign. The 30 to this side changed the sign to a, a plus 30. So that's it. We can subtract. Uh, in this case, that's 7 uh, minus 4, which is going to give us uh, 3x, which is equal to minus 6 plus a 30 is simply the same as 30 minus 6. Or you can just use your calculator. That is going to give you a 24. Remember, the multiplicative inverse, the multiplication there, you cannot subtract a 3. You cannot add a 3. You have to divide a product. You divide by 3. You divide by 3. So thus obtaining the x value, if we divide this by 3, which is going to give us what? Which is going to give us 8. So the x value that we want, and if we can test that, we must obtain, uh, that is going to satisfy this equation, is when x is equal to 8. So you can also substitute in place of x on the left-hand side just to check if this is true. In place of x, that's 7 times x, which is 8, minus a 30 is equal to 4x, our x, which is 8 minus 6. You must obtain same answers there. But the question was just to, for you to, to solve. All right. So that was our first part of the equation. Then another part you are given, x over 2 minus 3 is equal to a 7. So still, we can consider collecting of the like terms still because we've got the constants there, the minus 3, and the 7. So we can take these constants to one side of the equation, just transpose uh, this to the other side. The moment you take it to the other side, the moment it jumps the equal sign, it changes the sign. So many say we are going to remain with x over 2, which is equal to a 7 plus a 3. It was a minus. Now it's going to be a plus. So that's x over 2 is equal to 7 plus 3, which is a 10. Take note about this type of a question. This is x over a 2, which is equal to a 10. So take note about these two. You want to remain with x here. This is 1 over 2. Remember the additive concept, uh, the multiplicative concept. 2x is equal to a 20. You divide by a 2 because you're multiplied. You divide by these two. So in the same sense, if this is now written as x over 2, the moment that you now have it as x over 2, it means we must multiply by a 2 to remove that 2. 
because this x over 2 is same as 1 over 2. Remember, the multiplicative inverse, 2 times 1 over 2 will give us a 1. So in the previous case, you were dividing because it was 2x. Now it is x over 2. So you must multiply by 2 to remove these two. But whatever that you do on the left-hand side, you must do it on the right-hand side. So this was simply going to cancel because the same as 2 over 1. So you obtain x, which is 10 times 2, which is a 20. So that's our x is going to be a 20. Or you can use this concept uh, from here. I want you to learn this idea also. This is what you can do. Whenever you have got a fraction like this, all right, you want to calculate x and x over 2 is equal to 10. Write also 10 as a fraction. This is a fraction x over 2, 10 over 1. Remember, every number can be written as a fraction is over 1. So this is what you do. You cross multiply these numbers. You cross multiply 1. You multiply it across the equal sign to x. So it means 1 times x, which is x. And also, 2, you cross it to 10 across the sign, across the equal sign. It multiplies there across the equal sign. So it means it is going to be 2 times a 10, which is a 20. So you can do what we call the cross multiplication. So you can cross multiply, cross multiply 1 times x, it's x. 2 times 10 is 20. So that's our x, which is equal to 20. All right. Another part is to solve again for x. Remember those equations with powers, which we said we can take them from our exponents concept. x, when raised to the exponent of 3, it is equal to 64, and the x is in the best. So the concept is, uh, which number that I can use here? Because I just need a number here. X represents an unknown number. Remember the concept of the basis. So which number am I going to use here? Raised to the power of 3. So that it gives us a 64. So you're going to write this. X to the exponent of 3 is equal to. Now think of that number from 64. Which number that you're going to use raised to the exponent of 3? 64. Which number that you think of as 60, 64? Which number that you can raise to the exponent of 3? It gives us a 64. Is it 1? Is it 2? Is it 3? Is it 4? Is it 5? That you raise to the exponent of a 3, that you raise to the exponent of a 3, then you get a 64. That is the question. Is it a 1? Is it a 2? Is it a 3? Is it a 4? So you must choose a number. So from these, you can even test them on your calculator. Because you think of a number. I want a number that I raise to the exponent. So you can think one, two, raising to them to the exponent. already you have a reference. The reference there is what? Is three. So you use that as a reference. Now, one to the exponent of three, that's a one. Two to the exponent of three, that's eight. Three to the exponent of three, 27. Four to the exponent of three, that's a 64. You say, okay, this is where I'm getting a 64. It's from where the four raised to the exponent of 3. Remember, in the previous case, we were working with the bases being the same, and we said there is no way that the bases can be the same and the exponents are not the same. The exponents are supposed to be the same also. So even from those exponents, you can take them as an advantage also if the exponents are the same. So it's like a reverse of what you had before. So if the exponents if the exponents are the same, the bases must be the same also. The bases must be the same. Must be the same also. Just like what we had in the, in the previous case. Same bases, same exponents. So it also means same exponents, same bases also. So by just noticing that 3 and 3 are the same. Yes. X is equal to what? X is equal to 4. The best that we are seeing there. So X is supposed to be a 4. So 4 raised to the exponent of 3 is a 27. So that is the case. So guys, this is the case. You are already knowing the exponent that you are given there. X raised to the exponent of a 4 is equal to a 16. 
already you are given there the power. So just think of this 16. Which number can you use? 16 to the power of 4. Which number are you going to use? Is it going to be 1 to the power of 4? Is it going to be 2 to the power of 4? Is it going to be 3 to the power of 4? You can try. Then you say, okay, that is 2 to the power of 4, which gives us a, a 16. The moment that you see those powers, those exponents being the same, automatically the bases will be the same. So x will be equal to what? Will be equal to 2 by, by that concept. So this is what you can do. So these are the questions that you can have. Consider those typical questions you can be given. Maybe it is a 3 to the exponent of x. It is equal to 81. That case was an obvious case that we consider the base 81 in the base of 3. 3 to the exponent of x, then you write 81 in the base of 3. is 3 to the exponent of a 4. Now they are no longer giving you like this. They are giving you as x raised to the exponent of this 4. And they are saying it's, it is equal to 81. So are you saying it is just one and the same thing? 81 in which base? 3 to the exponent of 4 x to the exponent of 4. So when you say x will be equal to what? x will be equal to, to a 3 if it is like that. But in this case, when you are calculating this x that you are seeing, the, the x that we want here is from the power. So x will be equal to 4 from this case because the bases are the same. So x must be a 4. And this is the power that we are seeing. So they're just like playing around with you guys. They want you to reverse from one concept to another, from one concept to another like that. So let's revise as many questions as uh, as we can. All right. And another part we were given still with the equation concept. This is still an equation concept. They are saying use the flow diagram below to answer the questions that follow. We are given our follow, uh, flow diagram. And there we have got uh, a relationship that is considered as 2x plus 3. You input a 2, you must get a 7. That is the concept. When the input is a 2, the output is a 7. So if the input is 3, the output must be A. If the input is B, the output must be a 13. Remember that concept of your flow diagram. So the question is, on 5.21, calculate the value of A. It's now an equation. To calculate the value of, it is to find the unknown. So you see those flow diagrams now, they are taking them into equations. Okay, where is A? That is, where you that is what you just need to ask yourself. A is the output when the input is 3. Remember this condition. This is the part that is affecting what? A. 2 goes with a 7. Like I said, B with a 13. So this is the condition where A is its input there is a 3. So meaning to say that, remember, the input represents x values. These are x values, the input. These are the x values. And the output, you're talking about the y value, like y is equal to 2x plus, something like that. So in this case, it is just an equation. Do not, do not worry about that. You know that. When you input this x, which is the input x value, in place of x here, you input, you substitute in place of that x, you put the 3. So it means it is going to be 2 times x. The input, you substitute a 3 plus a 3. What are you supposed to obtain? The output. Remember? If you substitute the input, you get the output. And what is on the output? The output is A. So it's an equation. But already A is on its own. So we just need to simplify the left-hand side and obtain our A. So that is it. 2 times 3, which is 6 plus 3, is equal to A. And that is going to be a 9. So A is equal to a 9 in this case. That is the number representing a the output if this is a two here if this is a three you substitute there two times three plus a three two times three that's six plus three which is a nine so in place of a it means there is a nine there that is the output 
just like two, output is seven. The input is three, the output is nine. You substitute into X. Okay, let's see uh, the other part of our question, which is this part two. Calculate the value of B. B is the input. Remember how you calculated A, you substituted the input three in place of X. You substituted the input in place of X. This time, our input is not a number. It is a letter, a variable B. So that does not change because it is the input. It must be sub. That this is not going to change. As long as it is an input, it must be substituted where X is. So it means two in place of X, you substitute a B. So it can be two B like that in place of X. You substitute, just like what we, we did here, you sub a number, you substituted a number, which is three. This time it's not a number, it's a letter, it's a variable B. So that is two B plus a three. This is substituting the input, which is B. What are you supposed to get after substituting? You're supposed to get what is on the output, just like this case, it was equal to A. Remember, it was an A there. This time, B corresponds to what? To 13. B corresponds to 13. That is, its output there is 13. So what have you formed? You have formed an equation by knowing the relationship between the output and the input. You substitute the input, you get the output. But in doing so, you have formed an equation. That's why they are saying calculate B. That is, you are supposed to solve for B. Solve for this unknown value, which is B. How can we solve for B? All right, let's start with the three. The three from the additive concept is adding. So you're simply going to take it to the other side. It subtracts. Or just subtract here, yeah, a three, just subtract a three. Or just take to the other side. Remember what I said, if the number crosses the equal sign, it changes the sign. So it will be 13 minus a three, which is a 10. So meaning to say 2B is equal to a 10, 13 minus three. What about the 2B? Multiplicative inverse. We are multiplying. So find the inverse, which is two, uh, divide by a two, which is a half. A half means divide by a two. Four times a half means four over two. So to divide is to multiply by a half. If you are dividing by a two like this, you have multiplied by a half. So let's cancel the two and the two cancels. You have remain with one B, which is same as B. So 10 divided by two or two into 10, that is a five. So meaning to say B is supposed to be a five. For us to have the output as 13, the input must be a five. Okay, let's substitute and say two into five plus a three. Two times five, that's 13 plus three, 10 plus three, which is 13. As you can see, we are obtaining the output of a 13 if truly the input is a five. So that's solving an equation. But how are you solving the equation? We formed that equation from the relationship that is occurring of the input and the output values, understanding that alone is important. So you see, guys, when we introduce those topics, you're supposed to watch them so that you have the basics. So make sure that you do watch the introduction on the floor diagram uh, so that you understand what is happening between the input and the output condition.